people who are doing the most to improve the lot of life of every American citizen are the entrepreneurs, are the businessmen, are the people who are earning those hard salaries. And believe me, it's hard work. And it, it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifice. You know, unless you're born, but sure, there are certain people who are lucky and they're born rich. And, you know, life isn't fair. We can't just, you know, be envious of those people. But the reason they're rich is because their father or their grandfather worked hard. Somebody in that family worked hard, took a lot of risks, and benefited society because that's how they accumulated all their wealth. And if they want to give it to their kids and their grandchildren, that's their prerogative. But when, when, when you have a president who talks, who separates us, and says that the people who, who work, earn their money, and the people who pay their salaries don't, it's a very frightening thought. All right. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks for the call, Tristan. Uh, up next is John in New York, and let's not take any more calls. I have one more on hold, and i only got ten minutes left. Go ahead, John. Hey, Peter. Uh, First-time uh, caller, long-time listener. Uh, I wanted to say the, um, the end of Fed from the New York Campaign for Liberty chapter is on the 25th. And we're meeting at uh, Federal Reserve at 11, and then we're going to march up to City Hall Park to watch you speak around after 12 at some point. So I wanted to mm-hmm. say that if anybody wants to go. And the, the main thing we're doing is promoting the H.R. 1207 to audit the Federal Reserve, the legislation for Ron Ball. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to say, uh, you know, I commend you. You know, your, your ideas are very powerful. They had a, a big impact on my life. I think they will for a long time. I think you're a freedom fighter, you and other guys like Jim Grant and Jim Rogers and uh, Ron Paul and all of you that predicted a lot of this. I, I think you guys are freedom fighters, and I think your ideas are very powerful and they impact a lot of people. Uh, my, my one question was, you know, I'm a young kid. I'm in New York. I'm 24. I don't really have much to tie me down. I, I got I work full-time. I go to school full-time. You know, I, I, I know Jim Rogers actually moved his whole family to Singapore because he thinks that's where, you know, the shift is happening in Asia, and he's right, and that's a big deal to move to a whole other country. I wanted to ask you, is there a particular country where some kid like me who, who speaks English could go to where he would be more prosperous, where taxes might be lower, where government is a, a smaller parasite on a productive yeah, person? Un- uh, un- unfortunately, there are a lot of places around the world uh, that you could be that are going to be better than the United States, and, and for a while it's going to get very difficult. And I think a lot of young people, if we don't change what we're doing, are going to leave. You know, we talk about these huge debts and these huge deficits and the massive tax in- increases that they're going to necessitate on our young people and the huge Social Security burden. I mean, people think that people are foolish. Just like I mentioned that I'm thinking about moving out of Connecticut because they're trying to increase my taxes from 5% to 8%. Well, people will move out of the country. There's not, you know, they're not, they can't force us to stay here. At least I hope they can't force us to stay here. I mean, that would be a terrible thing if they just, if we had to build a fence around the country and if, and if they caught you trying to leave, you know, you'd, you'd be shot. But a lot of people are going to want to get out of here. They're going to want economic freedom. Remember, a lot of Americans are in this country today. I'm in this country today because my grandparents came to America seeking opportunity. They wanted to escape what was going on in Europe because there was more freedom in America. And if, you know, this generation is going to see it in, in a, a, a situation where there's more freedom in Asia or more freedom in, in Europe and, and, and not in America, then... The, the wave is going to be the other direction. It's going to happen. And there are a lot of people in this country who are the children and the grandchildren of immigrants who identify uh, with foreign cultures. There's certainly a lot of Chinese Americans, a lot of young Chinese who speak Mandarin, you know, whose parents came here. They'd be much better off going back to China. There's far more opportunities there, especially if somebody has something on the ball, they're willing to work hard, they're willing to build a business. That's where they should build it, where they're not going to be seen as a villain to be taxed. You, you do a lot of foreign investment, and you know, you know, a lot more than I do about potential, you know, upcoming economy. I, I know Asia is a big one, but you know, I speak English, and I could probably pick up Mandarin or so on. But is there a specific country that might be a good idea to move to? I know Jim Rogers moved to Singapore, but you know, I don't know. Uh, you know Depends well on I where you want to live. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you should take some time and travel. You know, go down to Australia, New Zealand, spend some time up in Canada. You know, go go into Asia. You know, take a you know. Uh, you know, it's up to you. Go down a lot. You know, I mean, you could look at other countries, uh, and, and depending on you know what your field of interest are, what your skills are, where you might have some friends or family members, it, it's 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 a very personal decision. But certainly, you, if you want to just simply go to where the taxes are the lowest, and and you know, you can do that too. Anyway, thanks for the call, John. Okay, thanks for fighting the good fight. Thanks.
Thanks. Last up for the night, Darren in Florida. Hi there. How are you? Good. How are you, Darren? Good. I have a couple of questions. Do you have time for uh, just one? Well, i got about six minutes. You're the last caller, so. Okay. Uh, the other first question has to do with the banking system. The other day, I was watching a clip where uh, Milton Freeman explains the purpose of the Federal Reserve. It's to make sure that people can get their money in the event of a bank run. Uh, put aside the effect that inflation is the only way to do that. Put aside the fact that, you know, fractional reserve banking is a fraud. Uh, does it make any sense that people expect to loan their money to banks at interest and at the same time incur no risk? and be able to withdraw any amount at any time? Yeah, you know, it, this, this is part of the problem. It's the moral hazard of the FDIC, of this lender of last resort, uh, you know, view of the Fed. I, I don't want that. I, and there's two things about it. If, I, if you put your money in the bank in a savings account, okay, that money should be loaned out by the banks. Obviously, they have to loan it out because there's no other way to pay you interest. Right. But if you put your money in a demand dep account, a checking account that doesn't bear interest, not a dime of that money should be allowed to be loaned out because it's there on demand. I mean, theoretically, when you put your money in a savings account, if you go to withdraw it, the bank is free to tell you, I'm sorry, we don't have it. We loaned it out. It's in mortgages. Uh, you, you, you made a, a deposit. It's almost, you know, like a, like a, like a CD. Uh, a savings account, yes, if the bank has the money, they'll give it to you, but technically they shouldn't be obligated. But a demand deposit, that has to be there on demand. That's why it's called the demand deposit, because you can demand it whenever you want. In a, t in a, in a passbook account, in a savings account, it's not a demand deposit. They don't have to give it to you. At checking account, they have to give it to you. It's there on demand, which means they shouldn't be able to loan it to anybody, which is why checking accounts never used to pay interest, because you can't earn interest in, unless you make loans. I would rather go back to a sound banking system where the government doesn't insure any of the deposits, where it's, they're run like real banks, and where individuals don't just randomly hand their money to a bank. Individuals make sure when they give their money to a bank that the bank is not making stupid loans and doing crazy things and taking a lot of risk because they know that they might not get their money back if the bank goes out of business. And if people think, well, individuals aren't going to be smart enough to know which banks are good and which banks are bad, well, you know what? They'll read things like consumer reports. I mean, people read consumer reports. They don't have a mechanics degree. They don't know what, you know, they don't know anything about cars, but they read a magazine that they trust uh, and, and, and they get opinions and they decide, this is the car for me. The same thing would happen with banks, uh, there'd be companies that would come in that would look at the banks and rate the banks, and they would be competing for market share based on their reputation. But now it's a moral hazard. Nobody gives a damn what banks do with their money, and the banks know this. All the banks compete over with is how much interest they can pay. No one cares what kind of risk they take. If, if people cared about the risk, none of these crazy loans would be on the books of our banks. They would have been far more prudent. But this is all a result of the moral hazards of this Fed role and the FDIC. And, of course, all the inflation is the result of the, of the paper money and the fractional reserve system. If we were on a solid banking uh, system with real money, gold money, and, 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 and redeemable currency, and without this system, we'd have a far better economy. We wouldn't have these booms and busts. We'd be a much more prosperous society. We'd enjoy a far higher standard of living than the one we have today. Right. I agree. I agree. Uh, second question. I'm an Air Force officer, I'm an atheist, I'm a libertarian, and I take my oath to the Constitution very seriously. So you can imagine I'm something of a black sheep here. Uh, now aside from moving up the ranks and gaining influence and debating others when I have the chance, uh, is there anything else that I can do within the government to shift this away from you know, conservative mindset? Uh, you know, unfortunately, I guess we don't have we have less time than I thought. We're in the last minute. I'm not sure. Call me again next week. Uh, I'm not exactly sure specifically what you do, but anyway, thanks everybody for listening. I appreciate. I'll be back again next Wednesday for another episode of Wall Street Unspun with Midweek Market Outlook. Don't forget to call us up if you haven't set up your account yet. 800-727-7922. 800-727-7922. And don't forget. Crash Proof, How to Profit from the Coming Economic Collapse, and a little book of bull moves and bear markets are still selling. And I am now finished with the revision. Uh, Crash Proof 2.0 is done. I just need the introduction to write. It should be out, I think, by October. Thanks again, everybody, and I will be back next week. So long.